Uh, friends, it is so good to see common names um, and new friends. I encourage you, if you have an opportunity, invite somebody to join us. You know, they don't have to tune in right at eight o'clock if that's too early for them or they got work or stuff going on. Send them the link later on, say, hey, check this out. Um, this is what it means to be part of our family, what it means to gather at our table, literally our breakfast table. I'm sitting at our outdoor table this morning and just enjoying this amazing weather. David, you're right, God is awesome. Un believable i think one of the simple things like even today you know as we move into fall this weekend i bought some uh some different blends of coffee some pecan or pecan depending on where you're from that's a you know that's something to really debate and divide over uh and so uh or some vanilla hazelnut and so busting out this morning the vanilla hazelnut and it is mm, it is so good so pumped also great news uh gbr uh looks like the huskers may Fingers crossed, be moving towards the date that the Big Ten is going to kick off some football as early as October 10th or possibly around Thanksgiving. So, man, good things on the horizon, good things within our church family this weekend. Um, kind of doing a, a standalone sermon, kind of. Uh, continuing on, just really one of the things I've been meditating on and I got asked yesterday is how does God see you or how do you think God sees you? So I've been thinking about that and thinking about, man, what – what do I think about the answer to that question? And then that lead into our new series of becoming us. And what does that mean? Who are we? Not just first free, but who are we as Christians? Who are we as followers of Christ? What does that look like actually according to the words of Jesus? And so as we've talked about meeting him and who he is, to then actually live as a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, meaning that before any man, before any church, before any denomination, before any ideology or philosophy, what does it mean to take the words of Jesus seriously? And without excuse or without loophole and to walk into them and to do that collectively as a body. And so um, have that going on. But then also we have our family meeting on September 8th and we're going to do a combo of live if you want to attend and come be part and gather at our physical table or live stream as well. Um, and just thinking about uh, really just kind of something that we do as a family. We gather together right at the beginning of each school year. and We kind of celebrate what God has done. We talk about our favorite memories over the past few months. And then we look forward and celebrate and are excited and excited anticipation of what is to come. And so that's what we're going to do next Tuesday, the 8th. If you've got things that maybe are on your mind or on your heart, please send them to me. Send them to me via messenger. Send them to me uh, via email, dlamont at firstfreelincoln.org or just uh, hit me up. I'd love to be able to kind of see where you're at, how I could be praying for you, how you could be praying for me and for my family as we kind of navigate this. One of the things you can be praying for is you can be praying for um, our son, Noah. He had a massive wipeout yesterday on his bike, but dude like jumped up. So he's all scraped up today. He's got a big bruise on his shoulder, um, but he's good. And he's okay. And so praying for him, you know, that's a, a physical thing. Also, if you want to be praying for me as well, just for wisdom, for discernment, um, it's a season that uh, I've really enjoyed in some ways and really lamented in others. And so if you could just be praying for that for me, I'd really appreciate it as well. And in that, as we talk about what are the actual words of Jesus, thinking about what we said, what we read this morning, if you've been following along with our Sermon on the Mount series, as we kind of enter the end of that reading time and I'm um, going to take the weekend not off from reading scripture but off of our plan and then we'll start a new plan up next Monday that I'll provide provide you with but he says this he says he who hears and does these words of mine I think that is unbelievably key is I think for a lot of us within the church for a lot of us that maybe have been inundated with bible studies and um, small groups and things like that that are all good great wonderful things we can become expert hearers of the word of god but what really demonstrates that we've listened and it's penetrated our hearts is it actually changes the way we see the world and engage the world or as jesus says do the words that he says the words that he speaks we've read a lot of things over these past two weeks a lot of really awesome encouraging unbelievable statements jesus has made but also kind of some revolutionary ones as he talks about blessed are uh, those who just weep. As we talked about, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. And we talked about being peacemakers and what that looks like as we've talked about loving our enemies, as we've talked about not being anxious. Like these are very 
uh, just deep, hard, unbelievable things that I often overlook because I just want blessing. Tell me some good news. Give me a verse to kind of tweet out, but really asking God, change my heart. I do not want to live the way that I've always lived. And what's interesting about this passage this morning is both the man who takes the words of Jesus, and the man who rejects the words of Jesus, they both build a house. Rain comes on both. Wind blows on both. So that means the prosperity gospel is not real, that difficult, that life is just simply hard. But the difference is what our foundation is, sand or the rock of Jesus. And maybe this season is really exposed to me where I've built a lot of my foundation on sand. A lot, of my, a lot of my foundation on things I could control, a lot of my foundation on experiences and entertainment, a lot of foundation on distraction. And instead, having it reoriented sweetly, gently, and with compassion from my loving Savior, Jesus. And so it's a great question today to see where are the words of Jesus not lining up with my life? Because what that actually reveals, what we read just a couple of days ago, is that good trees bear good fruit and bad trees bear bad fruit. And so what's coming out of my life is a reflection of what's in my heart. And so am I willing not just to hear the words of Jesus, not just memorize the words of Jesus, like I hope you've uh, been doing, I've been trying to do, but am I actually willing to be transformed by the words of Jesus? And so today, may we build our house on the rock. So I love you guys. I'm so thankful uh, for each one of you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your faithfulness. Um, just in engaging together as we seek to know Jesus as an authentic, diverse body of believers, a people in process. God, thank you so much that you don't leave us to kind of wonder that you aren't an indifferent God who kind of said, let there be men and women and then step back and let's get out our popcorn and see what happens. But instead, God, that you're intimately involved in our lives, that you give us your word, that we may know you, hear you, understand you, come to believe in you, God. And so, Father, I pray that we would take these words and that they would be strapped underneath our feet. That they would fuel the way that we talk, the way that we act, the way that we move, the way that we speak, the way that we listen, the way that we love today. Father, I pray for those of us that are anxious, those of us that are worried, those of us that are experiencing loss, whether that's through job or disappointment or physical death that's taking place of someone close to us. I want to pray for those of us that um, are just kind of worried and struggling and don't feel like we can get ahead, that we're just making decisions on the fly, God, that we're in constant reactive mode. Father, I pray for this, the gentle countenance and love of your spirit, that your voice would ring loud in our ears, louder than our inner critic, louder than um, those that are combating us. Father, I pray for the bravery to slow down and listen. And Father, I pray that we would build our house, not just on hearing your word, but hearing and doing it. So God, give us that courage, give us that bravery. God, transform our hearts we may see you more deeply and understand you more fully and make you known more practically. Thank you for loving us right where we're at. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Praying for you. Pray for me.